just my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and being a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen, and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl, and I will list the other things right here. It has only been a week since my last podcast episode, and I am just back in the groove. <laughs> so, um, and I have some fun things to talk about. So, I thought I'd record a new podcast episode. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about gift knitting um, because I have a lot of gift knitting to do and I want this to kind of become an accountability thing for me. So I'm going to share my progress with my gift knitting and I thought it would be fun to just chat about what you knit or crochet or make for gifts or if you don't. I did make some gift knits two years ago when I uh, knit a whole bunch of uh, socks. Last year I didn't do any uh, and then this year I'm back on the gift knitting train. I decided to knit uh, hats for uh, my boyfriend's family and perhaps some others and um, yes. I have never been much of a hat knitter so I wonder why <laughs> I um, offered this, but um, yeah, I thought hats can be too difficult, although I have never made a well-fitting hat. <laughs> Is it just me? Uh, my, my very first hats, I know they were very bulky yarn and uh, they were very, very colorful. I remember it was uh, Big Wool by Lana Grossa or something like that. But um, the hats, you know, they would fit, but um, they would not have any negative ease. So whenever I was on my bike, because yes, it's the Netherlands, so uh, I would go uh, to university on my bike every day, and you know, it my hat would <laughs> fall off. Um, and with the next couple of hats, it was kind of the same. Um, Yes, until last year, I think it was last year, when I made uh, two of these hats. Um, uh, this is my striped and stranded hat pattern, and this fits very nicely. Um, but still, you know, it took a whole lot of thinking. <laughs> and this is with uh, sport weight yarn, which is uh, not really a yarn that I have in my stash uh, all that often. So I needed to make a fingering weight version. Uh, so I'll show you the first hat that I made, and then I'll tell you about the other hats that I'm going to make and which yarns I'm going to use for them. So this first hat is for um, the boyfriend of one of my sisters-in-law and he's a golf teacher and uh, he's really into um, orange and I thought to make him a kind of sporty hat. Um, so this is what I made and you may have seen it uh, on my Instagram already and I am in love with it. <laughs> I'm not much of an orange person, but um, I really love how it came out. I used five colors. Let me hold up the yarn. I used five colors, um, three orange and two blue. Uh, two of the oranges are really similar, so you could probably uh, just use one of these. But um, I started out with this one for the ribbing. And didn't know if it was going to be enough um, to use for the rest of the hat so I um, yeah <laughs> I have a lot of orange in my stash and since I never really use it for myself I thought let's use all of the orange for this hat so uh, you could probably get away with using four or even less colors for this hat uh, the ribbing is very long and uh, it's about 38 rounds and this time, uh, I, I want to show you something that I forgot about last time. So this was uh, my first color work hat design. And this first color work chart uh, is um, my favorite color work chart. So I thought oh, it will show nicely 
uh, on top of my uh, head. It will be the most prominent. But <laughs> if you flip the brim, then uh, it covers almost all of that. So uh, I hadn't thought about that. So with this one, um, I thought to knit the ribbing twice as long as I wanted to so it can flip back onto itself and not onto any of the color work. So, and you can still wear it a little bit, like you can fold it over a little bit more, but, um, See, so now it folds back over itself and the first color work pattern is nice and visible and you can fold it back a little bit more. Um, yeah, and it is kind of slouchy on me, but it will be very snug, beanie-like fit on uh, the recipient. So um, and that is what I was going for. I'll uh, turn around so you can see the star pattern on the crown. <laughs> and yes, I really like it. And um, incidentally, this hat also fits me. Um, and I, um, while I was knitting it, I asked a couple of uh, of the other recipients to also try it on uh, so I could see if this amount of stitches, which is 120 stitches, would also work for them and it turns out that it will. So I'm very happy about that. Um, so this was a very successful experiment. Um, I think I will just have to see, like I will have to vary with the length. Um, to, you know, if I wanted to have a beanie fit, uh, I would have, um, I would not have made it this long. So, yeah. And as you can see, I'll give you a close-up of the color work patterns. Um, oh, that's the seam. Oops. So I started off with this one, which is very simple. And I actually used some of my previous designs and then put a third color in the middle and I really like how it came out and you are only using two colors at a time um, so you don't have to use three colors at any given point for this section uh, the blue begins where the darker orange ends so yes Again, you only have to use two colors at a time. And I just really like it. So I thought I'll, um, I'll just make multiple versions of this. And yes, this will be a pattern on my blog for free. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm still looking for names. So um, if you have any suggestions, uh, I already have some <laughs> lovely suggestions in my Facebook group, which is the New Leaf. Uh, knitting and crochet crew. So if you want to join my Facebook group, you can search for that in the tab um, And they suggested Oranje Bove uh, Orange on top, uh, which is kind of um, a nationalistic song here because uh, our royal family's uh, last name is Orange um, Oranje and uh, Oranje Bove is a song that we often sing with uh, Queen's Day or King's Day. So yeah, but since my other hats are not going to be orange, uh, I was thinking of another name. But um, yeah, usually when I uh, design with Metropolis, which is this yarn, Escape Use Metropolis, um, I tend to go for travel travel inspired names because uh, it's called Metropolis and all of the colorways are named after cities um, around the world. So uh, my sweater with this yarn was called the Around the World Sweater and for this hat I'm thinking maybe the Globetrotter although it's not really a nice word. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can see myself stumbling um, across that word. But um, anyway, the colors that I used are 77 Gribic for the light orange. They are 47, uh, 74 Tripoli, Tripoli. Uh, this is the bright orange, the Gigi made it orange, if you will, uh, that I use for the brim, uh, for this diamond, and then for the top. I have this orange, which is 75. So the oranges are all the 70s. Uh, 77, 74, 75. This one is Mexico City, and I use this one for the darker blocks here and for the first triangle. But as I said, you could totally just use this color for all of it or, you know, Mexico City for all of the darker orange because these don't contrast. Um, so I never, I never used both of these in one round. Uh, and then the blues, we have 11, this is Boston, the darker blue, and then light blue, which is Medan. And it's really pretty. Oh, this is number five. So yes, those are the colors that I used. And I am making a second hat now. And in true Carmen fashion, I am doing something that I absolutely do not need to do, which is make a hat for myself. <laughs> uh, because I am uh, writing a pattern of this uh, for this hat uh, and I wanted to add some extra sizes, uh, so this is really going to fit most uh, adult head sizes. Um, it uh, fits a 60 centimeters circumference head so 60 centimeters is that's 24 inches circumference so this is going to be the medium size and it's uh, basically a one size fits most um, because it fits me I, I have a relatively small head I think 56 centimeters uh, and this will also fit uh, 60 centimeter uh, head circumference which is about 24 inches um, and yeah so it will fit those snugly and it fits me like I still have a lot of room here um, so this is one size fits most I'm also making a smaller version and then the pattern will also have a larger version which I will probably not make myself but um, I will give you the numbers for it and uh, so this was 120 stitches this one starts with 108 stitches and um, you have an increase row after the ribbing and then the color work section which is all going to be a repeat of eight stitches um, so this one uses the same yarn Scapius metropolis <laughs> i'm always stumbling over metropolis <laughs> So Scapies Metropolis, this is the Karachi colorway 16, which is this lovely dark forest green. Again, I did 38 row, uh, rounds of ribbing and it's quite snug now, but Metropolis will um, um, grow quite a lot in blocking. So right now, <laughs> It would give me a headache, but I know that after blocking it would be perfect. So, and I knew that I would have to um, include a smaller size in my pattern because uh, <laughs> my mom, who also likes to knit, she has a very tiny head. Like, she has to shop for hats at the kids section. Uh, so I'm hoping that this will also <laughs> fit her. <laughs> Um, and after the ribbing, I just started on a uh, round with purple, which is this Johannesburg colorway 54. And the other colors that I'm going to be using, I uh, took a whole bunch of colors. 
um, because I wanted it to be um, you know nice and colorful and uh, the more colors that you have in your hat the more outfits that you can pair it with um, which is very handy because right now I have a dark green coat um, but you know these are also colors that I really like so um, using a bit of uh, every color means that I will also most likely be able to wear it with my next winter coat um, or other outfits. So yes, I'm working on a hat for myself right now, which is not even on my list because I'm not one of my gift knitting recipients. Although we should make room for personal knitting uh, in amidst all of the gift knitting. Um, but let me uh, guide you through the list of my gift knitting. It's not that much. It's it's really not that much. I have a list saved on my phone. <laughs> I need to make seven hats, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yes, seven hats. Um, one bow tie, because he didn't want a hat. So he wants a bow tie and um, another person doesn't want a hat but I might make her something else. So seven hats. I have one done. Please don't remind me how many weeks it is until Christmas <laughs> because I, I think I have to knit one hat a week <laughs> or one, one project a week because I have nine projects in total. Um, Yes, so uh, this is for the golf teacher, done. Then I have one sister-in-law, well I have four, but one of them is a Star Wars fan, so I was thinking of making a Star Wars inspired hat for her. And I am using, or I am planning to use, these colors as she also has a dark green um, winter coat some somewhat like this so I was uh, thinking of using this for the ribbing I hope she likes pink yeah I think she does <laughs> so this is one of the Shangri-La um, collection by Ching Fiber or Shangri-La uh, and this one is called Datura I think I bought this at the knitting and stitching show last year no year before the year before 2018 yes it was when I met Caroline from Dunder Knit or Knitting Vicariously podcast for the first time. That was really fun. And uh, Ching Fiber was there with a booth and I got this beauty. So I want to use this one for the ribbing. And then I have these. Well, these. Um, because, yeah, the Star Wars charts use a lot of black and white, and she's a fan of purple too, and I thought that might work as well. I have no idea if purple or green is in any way uh, relevant to the Star Wars series. <laughs> I think it's red and blue, but that might be Star Trek. Um, so there's this uh, pattern on Ravelry call, uh, called Star Wars Charts um, and you can find a whole bunch of charts in there and I was thinking of using one of the Stormtrooper helmets or you know one of the other ones. Um, <laughs> I really don't know much about Star Wars. Um, so I was thinking to use um, regular patterns and then one sneaky 
round or a stripe of Star Wars charts in there um, just so it it's not over the top Star Wars uh, although she might like that as well but yeah so that's what I'm planning with these yarns that is hat number two um, and then uh, for my second sister-in-law um, who is um, not really a hat person uh, I am thinking of a headband and I'm not sure why I picked well I, I'm, I am sure why I picked this these yarns because uh, she um, loves luxury uh, and these are possibly my most luxurious yarns that I have. <laughs> this is a skein of wool and vine yarns, my only skein of wool and vine. And I won't be using all of it, I think, for a hat band. Um, I mean, I wouldn't even use all of it for a hat, I think. So I think there's still enough in there to make a hat for myself. Um, so wool and vine, and then I'm going to pair it with some of my own hand dyed mohair and uh, this one I dyed last year with acorns and then I modified it with iron and actually those acorns we um, all um, you don't pluck acorns what do you do assemble collect we collected acorns um, during a family walk you know with this family so that was nice um, yeah so I'm going to hold them together so so it won't be as pink and I think that will give a really nice um, kind of classy elegant look to tone down the pink a little bit oh by the way this uh, colorway is called Undoorsy or Indoorsy I think it's Indoorsy um, as opposed to Outdoorsy and it's on her footsie base which is 80 80% superwash, blue face luster, and 20% nylon. And um, yeah, it's it's just a beautiful yarn. So I can't even believe I'm using this for um, a gift knit. <laughs> Um, but I think she will be really happy with it and I'm going to make a headband uh, and I'm planning to knit that um, in the long way so starting here and then going around the head um, and one of the headbands that I've made before is the uh, Vanessa headband by Nancy Ritchie who you might know from getting pearly with it on Instagram and um, I have knit that headband seven years ago I think it might even be longer uh, and I didn't know who Nancy Ritchie was um, so I thought this really funny and um, it's a beautiful cabled headband kind of like braided uh, and I thought that would also be really classy and I might even add some beads in there or some embroidery but I'll um, I'll try out first uh, to see what it looks like and I'm really excited for that because I'm use uh, I'm planning to use um, the leftovers for a hat for myself who knows <laughs> I'm already planning my next hat for myself it's crazy um, and then for my third sister-in-law and the fourth hat I am planning on using this yarn which is Snuggly Stars Yarn. Uh, it was a one-of-a-kind colorway called Turkish Delight, and it's beautiful. And one of my sisters-in-law uh, sisters really likes pink. Um, and I think this will be perfect. In fact, I actually showed her this um, skein, and she was like, yes! So I'm going to use this. This is an Aran weight, I think. Yes, Aran weight. I am planning to uh, knit a brioche hat with this. So to pair it with a white yarn, probably 
I think white, yes, and then uh, do a brioche hat pattern. So I'm thinking either from uh, Knit Graffiti uh, by Leslie or um, perhaps another brioche pattern. So, yep, thinking about that. Um, yeah, so for this one, I really have to make sure that it's um, really snug because iron weight yarn, yeah. Um, I think the, the thinner the yarn that you use for the hat, the better it will fit. Um, and yeah, I, I just hope that it will be nice and snug. For the rest of the patterns, or uh, for the hats, I haven't chosen the yarns yet, but, so this is four hat patterns, then for my fifth hat, which would be for my fourth sister-in-law, <laughs> I'm planning a kind of beret type hat, uh, with or without color work, maybe lace, I don't know. Um, I was thinking of using a dark green yarn as well. Um, if you have any beret type patterns that you have tried or that you have seen and really liked, please let me know in the comments because I have been searching for one and not really uh, finding what I'm looking for. Yes, so a beret. Then for the sixth, Hat. So my sixth hat, which, which, which would be for my father-in-law, I'm planning another color work hat, uh, but then with the blues and greens, perhaps browns, I don't know, um, perhaps some different patterns. Um, and then for another boyfriend of my sister-in-law, uh, I am thinking of either a color work hat because I really love color work or to use I'm just gonna go grab it or that I would use one of my own hand dyed yarns uh, which I think he would appreciate um, he's the one who appreciated my hand knit socks the most I feel like um, and he lives in a colder climate so Yes, I think, you know, he's the most knit-worthy one, I would say. I would say. Oh, I hope they're not watching this. <laughs> so, and I think that he would really like this color as well. Um, I dyed this color with... Oh, I haven't recorded what I used. I think it was birch leaves and iron. Um, and... This is my boyfriend's favorite um, because it's kind of olivey green, kind of gray, very wearable. Um, you know, it wouldn't be wearable for me, but you know, my boyfriend really liked it and I think it would suit the other recipient as well. Um, so I might just knit a plain ribbed hat with this or I might go for a color work hat. Um, we will see. Um, but this is 100% wool, so this is going to be warmer than the, um, um, than the hats with the sock yarn, because this has a little bit of nylon in it, and is it, it's not super wash, so that's good. I've lost count, so I will just go and see which one that I missed. I think I have named all of the hats, and now come the two non-hats, yes. So one of them, who's also quite knit-worthy, um, doesn't want a hat, and I really appreciate that he told me that, because I don't want to be making something that they won't use. So, um, um... And he asked a, uh, or he requested a knit bow tie. So yes, I'll be <laughs> searching for bow tie patterns, and I'll uh, perhaps maybe I'll make a couple, uh, one in a more subdued color, like perhaps a darker green, 
or a blue or whatever, and then perhaps one in a sparkly yarn <laughs> to match his girlfriend who is the pink one. So, um, yes, I think that would be fun. Oh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll have enough to make him a bow tie out of this. That would be cute. Okay, and then the second non-hat, which is for my mother-in-law, um, I'm thinking, you know, perhaps she would also like a headband, especially one that's going to be as pretty as this one. Or perhaps I need to make something different entirely. Um, she did really enjoy my socks, so maybe? <laughs> I don't know. If you have any ideas, any um, gift knitting ideas that would be nice for mothers-in-law or mothers or, you know, in general, nice gift knitting things that are not hats, then uh, let me know. And also, like, not shawls or anything, just, you know, relatively quick. I don't want to make a shawl or a blanket um, this late in the game. Uh, this late in the year, I mean. Ah, so yes, that's my gift knitting list. This was probably very boring for you to watch. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but I hope that you guys will keep me accountable. Um, perhaps I will have a tiny chalkboard that I can cross things off of. One hat is done. I need to make eight other projects as gift before Christmas. Please hold me accountable. Yes. And yes, this hat pattern will be available on my blog for free. Um, I'm still working on it, so uh, it will probably be somewhere in November. And while talking about November, uh, in November 1st or November 2nd, I'm still not sure of the day, uh, so it's going to be either on the Sunday or the Monday, I'm going to re be releasing my Subtle Socks collection. I have finished the first sock of the fourth and last design and I'm working on the second sock right now. And you can see the pattern a lot better now that it's blocked, even though it's still a subtle, which was by design. But you can see the flower patterns a lot better now. And this is the stripy gusset that I will have in each of the sock patterns. These are the four patterns. Yes, so um, I'm working on the actual writing down of the patterns, um, which is almost done. And I have to take some more pictures and then make it all into a pretty ebook to have it ready for launch on November 1st or 2nd. <laughs> Please let me decide. <laughs> Perhaps I should just do November 1st. Just decide right now. Okay, November 1st. Okay, November 1st, let's do that. Right, so I will be back with my hats. And yes, in the next podcast episode, I will also be showing you guys my sweater, my around the world sweater, uh, which I have now finished. But I haven't woven in the ends yet, so it's all, well, I've woven in 50% of the ends, but not all of them. Uh, and I need to figure out if I'm happy with the fit or if I want to modify it a little bit more. Um, so yes, that's going to be all for this podcast episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And yes, do tell me all about your gift knitting below in the comments. Um, 
I know that's probably not possible if you're watching this via your TV, but if you would then log in with your phone and type a quick comment or uh, give me a thumbs up, then I would really, really appreciate that. And please also check if you're subscribed to my channel because most people who see my videos are not subscribed. Um, and it really helps the channel and it helps me and I appreciate it. So thank you all so much. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.